Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me. This is Game God Fluent, bringing you episode 8 of Let's Try Grim Tides. I think it's a Let's Try, right? Whatever it says in the title is the right definition. I'll check after the video. Hope you guys are doing well. I am having a blast living large and in charge. Um, let's go ahead and turn the volume down a little bit. Let's get into it. Elzerion, level 6. So, 267. Let's see what we can make uh, Make a move here. We can sell this Savage Hide. Won't sell that. And we can sell this Pirate Bandana for 31 gold. Look at that. We have 339. And still have other stuff that we can maybe stash. Skeleton Key. <gasps> no! Alt F4. Alt F4. I didn't... I right-clicked it. No... No, son, don't do that to me. I right-clicked it to see the information when I should have left-clicked it. No. Don't do me like that. Burn -burn, burn -burn, don't do me like that. Baby, baby, baby. No, no, no. Okay, it didn't do me like that, baby. Ooh, we got lucky. We got super lucky and blessed. Thank you, Jesus, skeleton key unlocks dungeon exit, be it ingenious craftsmanship or a handy enchantment. This ornate key opens all sorts of locks. Ooh, add up to robes plus four HP, two SP, two spell power. Ethereal study equipment offhand, 40% chance for minus one cooldown with aether spells. A study on advanced principles of pure ethereal spellcasting. Instead of drawing the essence of magic from one of the arcane realms and channeling it through the aether, this school of magic draws directly from the great ethereal sea and is thus considered the purest by some stages. Snakeskin boots. 15% poison resist. A pair of extravagant snakeskin boots. Not only do they look posh, but they make it safer to charge through the poison infested wilds, too. We have an oak staff. Yep. Which is very nice thus far. Um, definitely could use an ethereal study, I think. But if we look at uh, our character, we do not have ethereal magic, do we? It doesn't say here. Um, let's we'll go look at the uh, Battle Academy, which we have money to play with. Aether, right? We have no aether spell, so that wouldn't really help us too much. But. We're level 6, and we have the gold. We could actually upgrade some of these abilities. Um, this would go from 12% insta-kill to 14% insta-kill. This would go to 85% chance to mute for 3 turns. And this would just go to 8 to 11 damage, so interesting upgrade. Um, we can also maybe... Let's see here. We use that, that ingot. Um, let's go ahead and drop the blood mo moss off. Oh, I almost clicked drop on it, guys. Yikes. A few little beginner traps here. Um, I don't know. We can't really use the flawless yet. That takes, like, level 15, I think. Um, let's sort the stash by name. What about this troll soup? Restores 10 HP. Let's stash that. Um, elixir of clarity plus 3 intelligence. <clears throat> we can stash that. Keep these three. And um, let's see. We need supplies, right? The barkeep glances at you with mild curiosity, one hand waving you over, the other polishing a large pewter mug. Buy 25 supplies. The barkeep has nothing to say to you. Buy a calming drink, restore two morale. Nice. Okay, now we've got more quests. Let's see if uh, any of ours came in. No. We didn't defeat all the enemies. We're almost done with these two. Let's drop acquire a topaz. What am I doing? I should have kept that. I could have taken more. Let's go with kill four thugs. Um... Kill four goblin marauders, I guess. And... Who 
both these both seem like kind of rough. We'll just we'll just hold off on that. Let's roll our dice. How about number one for five gold? Three, no luck. All right, let's roll a five. One, no luck. Dang. Oh, we're down to two ninety nine now. That's not good. Spending my money carelessly. Um, Smuggler's Den. There's nothing we really want to buy. Uh, the Adept Robes are a thought. 4 HP, 2 Spell Power. The official robes of the Sun Court Sages, produced with care and diligence, that shows in fashionable, stylized embroideries and magical enchantments woven into the cloth in equal measure. The green variant indicates the rank of an Adept in training and comes with minor spell-empowering enchantments. Now, compared to what we're wearing... We also have the Arcane Robe, one spell power, one spell resist. And this is items here too. So actually a little more powerful. Um, we'll go ahead and keep that on then. I do like the other one, but we just purchased that one, so... I kind of hate to sell it and then get new, you know? Um, what about the boots? Adept boots, one spell power, okay, that's fine. Um, okay, we need, like, we need a healing potion. And we need, oh man, we have no food here to take. Mohimica? Amanita Extract? Wait, isn't that what the quest wants? Amanita Extract, boom, let's take that. 22 gold, 15 XP. Grab this Amanita Extract. And, uh, let's hit that journal button, baby. 22 gold, 15 XP. You can check the arena. Look at this. Wow. Two Goblin Savages and a Goblin Slave. We'll do this one. It's gonna be a little rough, because those Goblin Savages are savage. Let's get them, guys. Alright, let's Dragon Breath, the Slave and the Savage, and go ahead and disintegrate, uh... Slave. Let's go ahead and insect swarm the savage and attack the slave. Savage slam. You're muted. Still does five. Um, let me just light up a smoke here. Let me go dragon's breath on you two. And maybe kill the slave, no? Mmm. Well, he did not help himself, so he dies and disintegrate, uh, you. You're still muted. Dragon's Breath on the two of you. Um, Insect Swarm on you. Muted again. Attack. Attack. Ooh, ten damage. Savage Slam. Disintegrate, uh, you. Insect Swarm, you again. I should have maybe just attacked. 10 death. Um, he's not going to do more than 10 death. And we can disintegrate his essence anyway. 11 and who did it without a healing item. 24 gold, 22 XP, baby. We should have been doing this arena much earlier. We kind of skipped out a lot on it, but we're 5-0. and oh. um, Let's see, we're at 285 gold. Um, you know... There's nothing to buy this round. Uh, we can go ahead and kill five Marauders, I guess. I don't know, that seems hard. Let's try to acquire a sunstone. Wow, our morale went down. Let's drink. Um, Battle Academy. We don't really have the money now to upgrade our skills. Or our spells, I should say. We have no skills. Uh, I don't really know what to do about that. Um, one second, guys. Uh, I could get a crushing for the staff. 
plus one damage, stun for one turn. I could get this stun expertise, 3% chance to stun for one turn, plus one damage versus stun passive. Your expert swings hit so hard they leave the enemy stunned for a brief amount of time. Stunned enemies can't take any action. I'm going to unlock that for 202. Boom. And then next level goes to 6% passive chance to stun with an attack for one turn. And I like that plus one damage versus stun because when we attack the stunned, you know, it's good. All right, let's save the rest of our money and go ahead and it looks like we're ready to go. You know what? I'm just going to make I'm just going to be safe and have another calming drink to take my morale to 10 and go to the smuggler's den and there's no food. We take the moldy bread, I guess, five supplies. Um a little rough this time. Might want to bring another healing potion. Let's see if I have any food stash. I should be buying food, it seems, as well. The stash. Um, Swarm leaf. Sorry about the background noise, guys. Um, I'm going to buy another healing potion just in case it gets, gets sketchy down there. Let's go to the world map and head back to the Mystic Grove. It's got the green background. Uh, one second, guys. Be right back. Alright. Let's go. Level 14. Small one this time. Just this batch here. Let's go. A snake nest. Okay, we've seen this before. Um, do we want to extract their antidote? Which is dangerous. We could get bit or just look around. Let's just look around. Uh... Can't find any, anything. No valuables. Oh, my dog is freaking out. I have my door open. I appreciate. I uh, apologize. Dragon's breath and disintegrate the aether bug. I guess. Insect swarm the aether bug and attack the aether bug. It can't aether discharge. Dragon's Breath, and attack. Boom, son. Nice. 7 gold, 20 XP. We overpacked for this little dungeon. Maybe. Okay, our first Goblin Marauder. Let's, um... What is the Goblin Marauder? Oh, the Cunning and Ruthless. Cunning and Ruthless Sneaky Marauders are much more dangerous foes than average Goblin Warriors. Familiar with the woods and its rich vegetation, they will often apply deadly poisons to their weapons before striking a lethal blow to their unsuspecting enemies. Let's Dragon's Breath. Oh, I meant to hit the Marauder. Disintegrate him. Let's also Insect Swarm him. Nice, he's a... Uh... Oh no. Oof. Okay, let's... Hit you guys and kill one war cry. Um, disintegrate you. Kill you. Ah, they did nine too. Um, insect swarm. Uh, attack and disintegrate just to be safe. Cool. Sixteen gold, thirty-four XP, and a liquid courage. Restores three morale. Very good. We could use that. Let's get some steps in to try to heal up. One second, y'all. Shrine to Ob the Defiler. You find yourself standing before a small shrine dedicated to Ob, the unpredictable deity associated with the arcane realm of chaos, and a celestial sibling to Obereth, the patron god of the empire. Grotesque imagery depicting gruesome rituals covers the base of the shrine from top to bottom. A god of violent change and chaotic transformation, Ob is not admitted in the official pantheon of the Thousand Temples. His worship is looked upon with disapproval and distrust, and his acolytes and followers limited to secluded underground sects, often associated with dark occult practices. If we were part of the Thousand Temples background, we could destroy the shrine. Pay your respects, 70%. It would give me a boon. Um... Uh, 
I'm going to do it. You pay your respects to Ab, mouthing a silent prayer in his name. In return, the god of chaotic transformation grants you a minor and temporary boon plus 15% crit. I was hoping for a, a permanent one. Disintegrate his essence and attack. Attack and insect swarm. Attack. Boom. 5 gold, 10 XP. These steps are getting some HP back. Very nice. Smuggler and a thug. Thugs are good. Thugs are good. What's a smuggler? Smokescreen. Hides in nearby shadows. Increasing resistance to spells. Cannot be targeted directly next turn. Among the countless multitudes of the Isle's exotic trade goods, not all could be categorized as strictly legal, at least as far as the Imperial officials are concerned. Sadly, this does not make the demand for said goods any lower. With the rich... Okay! With the rich and decadent clientele back at the Empire, such petty injustices of the Imperial legal system enable smugglers to thrive and make good money trafficking in dark alleys and wild outskirts of Farhaven so long as they don't get caught. Well, my friend, you got caught. Um, we're going to go ahead and disintegrate uh, you so you can't do any hiding nonsense. Thug's big ability is what... Oh, he doesn't have an ability. He just hits for three to four. Being a thug for hire in a lawless frontier is not without its benefits. One rarely finds himself unemployed with all the self-proclaimed entrepreneurs fighting for their piece of cake in borderline criminal activities that take place on the bustling streets of Farhaven. On the other hand, life expectancy in the profession is rather on the low side. Um, do that to you and attack you. Uh, another dragon's breath and kill you. Boom. 10 gold, 26 XP and an aether dust. Plus one spell resist, tier one. Originating from the great ethereal sea that connects the outer realms, Aether Dust is the very essence of magic, conjured and solidified via arcane means, and grounded to fine powder in one of the Sun Court's workshops. Unlike the ingested Aether, which boosts a person's spellcasting abilities, sprinkling a small amount of Aether Dust onto one's skin has the opposite effect. It dampens any magical energies directed towards the person, protecting them from harmful spells. Cool, but I think we're at the limit, maybe, of our inventory. And we have to heal. Nice, the last draw effigy we need. Boom. Uh, let's disintegrate the Fey Watcher. Let the effigy do its thing. Um, attack. 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 Uh, insect Swarm. I don't know, I don't think it has an ability anyway, does it? Recovery, yeah. Oh, that's passive. It's muted, so I don't know if the passive is still getting off, but boom. 10 gold, 22 XP, and a sand carp. Nice. We still do have room, but I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, 20 HP, 10 supplies. I could probably get through with a sand carp. Uh, I'm going to save that, though. And I'm going to go ahead and do the opposite and just pop a potion. Restore my full HP just in case. Bay Watcher. Um, you know what we do in individual battle. We disintegrate that essence, boy. 5 gold, 12 XP. And we can collect kill 7 straw effigies. 32 gold, 23 XP. Boom. Goblin Warriors is next. Beautiful. Don't want to leave the dungeon yet. Nice. Our goblin warrior right there, but two goblin brutes. This is not good. Um, let's see what the brutes do. Frenzy. Goes into an unrelenting frenzied state, increasing damage and critical at the cost of armor. Their armor is minus one, but their damage is three to six base. Um, let's go ahead and try to mute you. It didn't work. Good thing we didn't eat the sand carp because we would have been busted up here. Let's um disintegrate you and attack you. He didn't frenzy yet, which is good. 
Dragon's Breath and Insect Swarm. Don't Frenzy. Muted them. Um, kill and maybe kill. Nice. Leaves you, buddy. You can get disintegrated. You can get Dragon's Breath. Um, attack. Nine. Boom, son. Look at this damage. Ten. 18 XP, 40 gold, and a Druidic Almanac. What? Equipment off and tier 1. 40% chance for minus 1 cooldown with nature spells, and we do have Insect Swarm. If you ask purists at the Sun Court, nature magic is considered the least pure of all arcane disciplines, for it is not a single arcane realm that the Druid draws upon. Instead, this type of magic borrows from all elements that constitute life itself, mixing them together in most unpredictable ways. Others, less prone to such categorizations, would say that it is the most creative when it is actually manages to produce something useful. Either way, druids are looked upon as weirdos and outcasts among the sages, and it's no small wonder that this almanac ever got published. Sick. Let's look at our character. I think we can go ahead and equip that. We do have a nature spell, of course, which is Insect Swarm, which doesn't say here it doesn't give all the details which is uh interesting but let's head up here oh we've got hostile elementals two water boys disintegrate you water elemental hits for six let's insect swarm you so you can't get a your skill off, which is Healing Rain, a soothing aura that heals all allied creatures on the battlefield. That could get annoying fast. Um, dead. Now we can just disintegrate you and kill you. Not bad, not bad, not bad. 8 gold, 12 XP. Looks like we're... Ooh, 15 gold. Alright, that's the dungeon. Let's leave. 25 gold, 35 XP. Repairs the arena. We know how that goes. Um, we are pretty good to go. Let's see. Uh, let's see what they have. An iron ore. We'll grab that and make an iron ingot. Fishing rod. Offhand equipment tier 1. 8% chance to find supplies. Simple fishing rod used for fishing. Chance to find a small amount of supplies on each dungeon tile when equipped. On each tile. Wow. Now we've got some interesting gear here. An oak staff. Not as good as what we're using. The Adept's oak staff. Leather cap. Minus 2% enemy crit. Fine leather boots. 4 HP. 2% evasion. A pair of boots made from some of the finest leather available to Imperial Tanneries. Padded jacket, 4% evasion and 4 HP. Ginkgo leaves, sand carp. Um, let's grab a Ginkgo leaves. And let's go do some grave concoction. Well, actually, let's head here and dump some off in the stash for now. Let's stash the sand carp, the aether dust and the liquid courage and grab our did I s no there's the iron ore take that take the marigold petal and let's head to grave concoctions put the ginkgo and marigold together to get a healing potion put the ore together to get an iron ingot let's go to the black anvil throw an ingot up there 175 gold for one minimum damage of my offense or four more HP for defensive purposes. We need 175 gold, which we do not have. Um, can't go to the arena. Collect our wages for 29. Um, or I could just buy the fine leather boots and be done with it. Kill six giant bugs. I like that. Let's grab that. Let's have a calming drink. No, wait. We can drink the liquid courage. We need supplies, though. Ah, just have a calming drink. Wait, no. Let's drink the liquid courage. Oh, my gosh. Uh, 
Take that. Stash the ingot for now, I think. Stash the healing potion for now. Uh... For now, we can um, see what boots we're wearing. We are wearing the Adept boots, one spell power, so I'm not going to change those out. Um, we have 118. Is there really anything we can do? To uh, oh yeah, we have. Look at this: exterminate Mystic Grove, 27 XP, 20 or 27 gold, 22 XP. Five Goblin Warriors, 30 gold, 16 XP. Look at this, nine, 175 right on the dot. Is there anything we can grab here? We do have a Blood Moss. Let's grab that. Potion of Omnipotence. Huh. Let's go to the journal and collect acquire Blood Moss. 10 gold, 15 XP. 185. So, we can take our ingot again. Head to the Black Anvil, throw the ingot up there, and uh, probably upgrade our minimum damage from 2 to 5 to 3 to 5, or 4 HP. Um, let's go offensive level, boom. We're upgraded, 3 to 5, very nice, very nice. Uh, is there anything we need to stash? We're gonna drink the liquid courage, right? Let's go to character and do so. Oh, we can't right now. We have to do it in in the uh, in the den. Forty-one gold they'd give me for that druidic almanac. What's the um, cooldown on this? Three cooldown. Three actions for cooldown. And this has a 40% chance, what, each turn? For minus one cooldown. Oh, for minus one, not even minus the cooldown itself, just for minus one act, one turn, one action. Uh, we'll equip it. We have 10 gold left, um, full supplies, good to go. Uh, let's see how long we've been playing. 27 minutes only. So let's head to the next adventure. Um, something tells me to pack for a a wild adventure. Um, wait a minute. Grab the sand cart. Put the healing potion away. And put the moldy bread away for now. That should be good. Um, let's do it. Mystic Grove. Cool green background. Let's go. Level 15. Iron Bark Glade. Here we go. You find yourself so deep into the maze like interior of the grove that you're not entirely sure you know the way back anymore. To make matters even worse, the tree canopy in this part of the forest is so dense it almost completely blocks out the sun, forcing you to trudge onwards in a state of perpetual gloom. Hundreds of glowing eyes of the Fae usher you forward, and you soon find yourself in a glade, a wide open area with a single gargantuan tree sprouting in its center, iron bark. As your eyes adapt to the sudden burst of sunlight, you can see Fae converging around the tree in scores, their small flowing robes fluttering in the vortex of ethereal wind of their own making. Not sure what to expect, you prepare for the work and cautiously carry on. Oh, this is a rather big one. Uh, I don't like starting this way. Two goblin brutes. Three. Um, and you go frenzied, so let's just insect swarm you. And uh, attack you. Or... And, uh, kill. Good. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Oh, yeah. Now we're doing some damage. Ooh, Seeker Worm. 16 gold, 30 XP. They do give good XP and all that jazz. 
bloody remains. You stumble and almost end up in the dirt as your foot catches something hard and slippery. Looking down, your stomach lurches in disgust and terror as you discover gruesome remains of a body. Only parts of it are discernible in a bloody mess that's been scattered on the ground. <clears throat> while the rest has been chewed to mincemeat by some exotic predator. Um, let's go ahead and bury the remains, I think. You do the right thing and bury the bloody remains as best you can, giving the unfortunate victim a proper rest place. resting place, plus one morale. We're at nine. We still have the liquid courage. Oh, look at this. And everything in the world tonight makes noise. Oh, venomous shot, magic missile. Alright, let's insect swarm you and attack you. Dragon's breath. Um, insect swarm you. Beautiful, both are muted. They can just do little damage. Attack you. Disintegrate you. No, oh, nice. Haven't happened in a while. 21 gold, 40 XP, and a liquid fire. Tier 2, minus 10% ambush chance. Brewed from the ground, ground powder of swarm of leaves. This potion will burn a person's guts inside out while giving an extreme focus for a limited span of time. And we are already hurting, it looks like. Oh, Goblin Marauder, Goblin Brute. Going to disintegrate the Marauder though, so we don't get that poison shot. Frenzied, um, dang, too late to really do anything with. Yeah. Um, insect swarm, please. Nice, muted. Yeah, he's doing major damage. Um, nice, another disintegration. 13 XP, 29 gold, and an Amanita tier 1. 25% chance to poison for 1 damage per turn. Amanita is a poisonous sort of mushroom that can be found all across the jungles of the Southern Isles. The poison itself is not the most potent one, but its effects are almost immediate and comprised of a strong feeling of pain and burning where the substance makes contact with the skin, properties which make it perfect for application on weapons for hunting and combat purposes both. Ooh, we're down to 13, so let's just go ahead and drink a potion. Uh, I don't know, I feel like I'm going to regret this. I do. 13 gold, maybe that's a good sign, because look how much we have left. Maybe it'll be quiet a little bit here. Look at all this HP I could have gained. Uh, that's okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's okay. We're almost there, guys. Fey Watcher and Magus. Um, disintegrate the Fey Watcher. Boom! That disintegrate is working overtime today. Oh. 9 gold, 24 XP. It's okay. Death or taxes. You find yourself before a large wooden bridge across a deep ravine. There seems to be no other way across, and the bridge itself is blocked by a band of rough-looking outlaws. As you approach, the leader of the unsavory group claims you've trespassed on their ter territory and demands you pay the tax for passing the bridge. We can bluff or debate. Um, privileges, if you have the Explorer's Guild background. Uh, let's try to debate. Oh, wait. Um, I think bluff maybe feigning outrage you propose a counterclaim you're an imperial aristocrat from an influential family come to claim your newly acquired colonial property paid for in vast amounts of gold if they don't vacate the premises immediately you'll be forced to write to the emperor himself and demand retribution which you will be which will be you assure them quick and merciless after a few moments of confusion the outlaw leader breaks into a wide grin and with a merry whistle orders his men to take what's theirs by brute force minus 16 gold straw effigies and fey watcher very good uh, I'm 
11 gold, 22 XP, and a Bohemica. Right, a little bit of invisibility. Oh. Fe what, son? Fey Enchanter. Enchant armor, increase armor of a single ally. Clad in purple and burgundy colors, enchanters are dedicated defensive spellcasters and act protectively towards others of their kind. The few scholars in Farhaven that dabble in such things speculate them to be among the highest ranking Fey, a sort of nobility of their intricate and strange society. Fey Avatar, 100 health, 8 to 10 damage. Aether Shock, 8 to 11, a powerful discharge of magical energy that causes damage and reduces stats. And Flourish connects with the Aether in order to recover health and boost ability damage. An extraordinary variety of Fey you've encountered in the Ironbark Glade. It is unknown what the exact role of an avatar in the Fey society is, but the rest of its kind seem to treat it with awe and reverence and defer to its leadership in combat. Who knows, perhaps you've unwittingly slain a Fey prince of sorts. If we slay them, um... Let's attack and then disintegrate you. Enchanter enchanted his armor. No... Dang it, let's, let's swarm you and try to kill you. Oh dear. Dragon's Breath. Ah, oh, this is so bad. Um, we do not have what it takes. Three, eight, three, fairy fire. Um, disintegrate you, insect swarm. You again. We're gonna die here. There's no doubt about it. Attack and Dragon's Breath. Flourish. Hey, Magus. Um, disintegrate again. Attack, Insect Swarm on you to mute you. Nope, we're gonna die. Dang. Use the plus three endurance. Gives us a little, little bit of room to work, but. Um, insects swarm him. We're dead. You've fallen. Arise and struggle a new adventurer. Famine. 100% supplies cost. Harvests have failed again and dwindling supplies of food are in high demand. Prices increase accordingly, at least for the time being. Alright, we got rocked. Um, it's 30 gold to restore our supplies. Let's check our journal. Did we complete anything? No. Um... I didn't know we were going to be going there, like, so... Let's do the troll blood. Wait, do we have a troll blood? No. Moonstone, troll blood, kill five fire bugs. Let's do three aether bugs. See what the smuggler's den has. Ooh, adept bracers. 10% poison resist. Bracers of a sun court adept are inlaid with a protective filament that blocks most common poisons so as to protect the aspiring students from various substances they come across during their training. Adept's Handbook, plus one spell power. A beginner's introduction into the arcane teachings of the Sun Court, a must-read for every aspiring adept, written by Sage Asmodeus, 1225 IE. Alchemist Garment, one spell resist, 25% poison resist. Alchemist Garment is a safety clothing worn by alchemists working in labs. Resistant to chemical burns and coated with a thin patina of poison-resistant wax. They consist of thick layers of non-absorbent materials, rubber gloves, and an apron. An Inquisitor's Scepter. Oh, sun. 2 to 3 damage, plus 2 spell power, plus 2 damage versus arcane. A scepter is a ceremonial staff, often used by sages, wizards, and other arcane practitioners to enhance their spellcasting abilities while still being a decent weapon in its own right. A scepter is made out of metal with a magical focus, usually a gem from which the user channels the, the aether, centered at its top. I would uh, probably grab that <clears throat> if it wasn't 250 gold and we only had 27. Knight's Longsword, look at that. 
2 to 4 damage, 15% <coughs> wound chance, plus 2 damage versus ogroids. The first defining characteristic of a longsword is the blade length, which mo with most longswords featuring a 33 to 43 inch blade. This relatively long blade offers length offers a unique combination of strength and agility. A person wielding a longsword can easily engage foes while also maintaining a high level of defense. It is this versatility that makes the longsword a preferred weapon of choice among many military professional organizations, the Imperial Knights being amongst the former. Oh, boy. Um, we can't do much of anything here. But do we, have a po do we have a potion in the stash? We do. Let's take that. Let's stash the Bohemica. Stash the Amanitas. Liquid Fire. Um, let's sell the Liquid Fire. Uh... Liquid fire goes for 15 gold. Let's sell it. How much morale do we have? 10 out of 10. Maybe sell the liquid courage. Um, let's buy the sand carp. 20 HP, 10 supplies. Let's buy... Let's see, the grog is 1 morale. Imperial brandy's 2 morale. Let's buy the grapes. 15 HP, 7 supplies. Grapes from Southern Isles are not so rare a commodity these days, even with the Muatan natives being fiercely protective of their favorite fruit. We have two gold left. Let's sell the Liquid Courage. Um, yeah. I used my Endurance Potion. Oh my gosh. I knew I felt bad using that one potion. I was like, I don't think this is going to work. Troll soup. Let's grab the troll soup. 10 HP per turn for 5 turns. That's pretty good. Elixir of clarity plus 3 intelligence. Let's take um, stone. Let's take a stone roach with us that we can consume. Um, no sulfur. Grave Concoctions, Aether Dust, goes with Sulfur, or Mutagen. There's the Troll Blood. We could have used the Liquid Courage to make a Potion of Paranoia. It's okay, though. Alright, how does that look? We've got Sand Carp, Stone Roach, Troll Soup, Grapes, Healing Potion, Sage's Wisdom, and an Invisibility Potion. Actually, we should probably grab... Well, that's pretty much it. Just in case we cross or come across a Troll Blood, we'll grab that, I guess. Alright. The barkeep looks at you with barely concealed amusement, grinning from ear to ear at your approach. Let's... We have 28 available gold. Let's roll a 5 for number 3. Come on, number 3. 4, no luck. Uh, I usually roll another one. Let's roll another 3. Come on, 3. 5, no luck. Alright. Uh, well, it's probably time to end the LP. Yep, yeah, or end the uh, episode. So I want to thank you guys for joining me. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you... um. You know, don't mind that we died there or we lost. We'll con attempt it next time. I wonder if the dungeon will already be filled out. We just have to go to that one room. Or if we have to do the whole dungeon over again. We'll see. But pretty rough one there. But hopefully this combination of items can get the job done. I don't know. I'm kind of sketchy on even this being enough. Uh... Might want to also grab... Let's grab the moldy bread. And... Invisibility for retreating earlier. We don't have to fight every battle. We can always retreat. So, um... That's good to go. For next time. So, thank you guys for joining me. 
like I said, I hope you're enjoying and I hope you'll stick stick with me for more because more is definitely coming. So appreciate your viewership, guys. Much love, peace, and joy. Stay tuned and I'll see you in the next one. We'll get our revenge on that fey avatar, eh? <laughs> All right, much love, peace, and joy. Bye-bye, guys.